If your next project is built with JavaScript, TypeScript, React, or React and TypeScript together, Vite will help you start your project faster than ever before. Today we'll look at how fast and how easy it is to use Vite. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we're learning how Vite can help our front-end development process. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Today we're talking about Vite. It looks like you would pronounce the word Vite, but it is pronounced Vite as in V-E-E-T. Today I'll show you how Vite can help you get any JavaScript, TypeScript, or React project started faster than ever, and Vite also easily works with several other libraries and frameworks. First, you're going to need Node.js, so let's go to nodejs.org, and if you don't have Node installed, you want to install the version that is recommended for most users. As of the making of this video, it's 18.12.1. The LTS stands for long-term support. And even if you do have Node and you just want to upgrade it, maybe you want to download and install that. So after the download, go ahead and install Node.js and then open up VS Code to an empty folder. I have an empty folder open in VS Code and I'm going to press Control and the back tick to open a terminal window. And inside this terminal window, I'm going to type Node and then dash V just to check which version of Node I have installed. And you can see I have the latest 18.12.1. Now that we've confirmed that we have Node, let's go ahead and use npm that comes with Node to create, and then vite at latest is what you want to type in and press enter. After we do that, I'm going to go ahead and click this arrow to take our terminal window to full screen here in VS Code. And you can see it's asking for a project name. I'm going to create a Vite-TypeScript project. So that's exactly what I'll call this, Vite-TS-Project. And this will create a new folder with this project name. I'll press Enter, and you can see it gives me choices for a framework, including the top choice here would just be vanilla JavaScript. Now that's what my TypeScript will compile into, so I'm going to choose that. But if I wanted React, you can see it's in the list, as well as Preact, Lit, Svelte, and others. So I'll just press Enter here on vanilla, and then it gives me the choice JavaScript or TypeScript. I'm going to choose TypeScript and press Enter. And now you can see it has completed creating that folder with vite-ts-project. And we're in the parent folder that I called vite here. So inside of this, it is telling me what to do. It says cd and then choose that folder name. So vite-ts-project. And now I'm inside of that, as you can see here for the terminal. And now I need to type npm, and you can either type install or just the letter i, which also means install. So I'll just type i. We'll let that install, and after it completes, which it's very fast, and then we'll say npm run dev, and this is going to start up our development server, ready to go. It says it's at localhost 5173. When I mouse over this, it says I can control plus click to go ahead and open it in a new tab, and now that's what I've done. And here is our minimal Vite app already using TypeScript, and it's got a counter in it, which works as well. So now let's explore the folder and see what we created. And that was very fast as far as creating all of that as well. We can close this, by the way, and the server will continue to run. So let's open this folder and see what we've got. We've already got our TS config for TypeScript, if we're going to use TypeScript. And of course we could change our configuration if we wanted to, but the defaults are pretty good for your normal TypeScript usage. And if you've been completing my TypeScript series, you can see it already added the includes source directory that we'd been adding to our TypeScript config file. And you could change those again if you want to. Our package JSON already says we've got dev dependencies here of TypeScript and Vite. And you can see what we could choose to do to run our server as we did before with npm run dev that's why it's running right now there's also a build command for when we would deploy say we sent this to github and then we would deploy it to vercel or another host and then we could just say where our file is and it would build right there in our deployment that's all great so 
Everything looks good there. Let's look at the minimal stuff here, and we're just pulling in our main.ts in the script that it lists here, and that's because we're in dev mode now, so it hasn't really built that yet. And then inside the source directory, we've got our main.ts file, we've got the counter.ts, and just the basic stuff for that basic page. But that got going very fast. And one thing I want to highlight here is we've also got a vite-env dot d dot ts now this is where we would set the types for environment variables and veet has some great documentation on the veet site that i'll link to in the description that would show that so we've created one project already we'd be up and running and ready to write our typescript code for this project but i want to create one more here before we finish so i'm going to bring this back over and I'm going to go ahead and open the terminal and press Control C so we can stop our dev server. And from here, I'm going to CD and type two dots, which is going to take us back up to that parent directory. And that's what we see in our file tree over here is the parent directory and then this project. Let's create another project. So I'm going to once again type npm create beat at latest. Press enter, and it should give us those choices again. I'll let this go back to full screen. What am I going to name this? Well, I'll just say beat-react-ts-project. So I'm going to use React and TypeScript. I'll go down and choose React by pressing enter. Choose TypeScript once again. And now it gives us similar directions. Notice it's already created that project folder for us as well. So I will cd and then vite-react-ts-project and then npm i and then we should be able to type npm run dev and this will go much faster than create react app if that's how you've been creating your react projects okay npm run dev this will get up and running and i should be able to control click and launch this and now we've got a vite and react project once again, a counter that's working, and we can explore those files if we want to. So I will drag this over. Let's look inside of this project, and we can see something more like we're used to for React now. So we'll open this up, and we'll see a main.tsx file. I can close that terminal window again. And then we have our app.tsx file here as well. And there's an assets directory as well. It has the React SVG in it right now. So just a little bit more exploring. Notice it's also got this vite.env.d.ts. Once again, we're using TypeScript now with React that we would see here. Still got that config file for TypeScript here as well. It's got our package JSON. And there's also the vite config that I didn't talk about before. But if we were going to use plugins, this is where we would put that in. And you can see this is using a plugin for React. So that was a very fast way to start a React project, and it's configured TypeScript for us already. We're going to have that type IntelliSense in here too. So let's go to the app.tsx, and we can see what we have here for our basic code. And if I mouse over count, it tells me count is a number. So we're getting that same assistance that we're used to, even if we're not in React when we're working with TypeScript. So it's great. It's ready to go with the IntelliSense already built in. Okay, quickly, I just want to highlight a couple of things in the docs. There is great documentation here for Vite. Let's go to the guide. And then in the guide, you would want to choose deploying a static site. And they already have this mapped out for several hosts, including Vercel, just GitHub pages even, render.com, uh, Netlify, I believe Firebase is in here. So I wanted to highlight that if you're ready to deploy your project, they make it fairly easy step-by-step step as well. And then as I talked about ENV variables and modes, they describe all of that here. And it's a little bit different than you may be used to with other projects where you had process.env. Here you would have import.meta.env.mode. And where I talked about type below, well, I said dot mode, that would be a built-in variable, but you would put your variable here if you created one. And it shows you how to do that as well here in the docs. Also though, if you create an ENV file, if you end it in dot local, it will be ignored by Git because you already have a Git ignore file that is created for you in those projects as well. So just a couple of things to highlight. I am not an early adopter of new things. I like to wait until they are fleshed out a little bit 
and are working well within the community. I believe Veet is. I, I know it's been around for a while, and I just had not experimented with it that much. But now that I've used it, I don't think I'm going back. I think it will be my new choice to launch projects. And it just does such a great job and configures them pretty much like I would want to use them right from the start. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.